The name of this message is called The Listener. Many times, Lord, I hadn't been a listener. I've been a talker. Many times I've listened with my ears and I've processed things through my head and I've lived in the flesh with logic, but I haven't had the mind of Christ. I repent of that today. Lord, let everything that we do be processed through our heart and your heart for us. Our surrendered, repentant, broken heart that you're purifying and justifying every day. Let us process everything through our heart. Forgive me, Lord God, for any place that I've walked in judgment over anybody. I repent of that, Lord, in Jesus' name. And bring us to this place of oneness and one accord, loving like you do, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. Last week I talked about, uh, well, two weeks ago I talked about anointed for, do we have any people that are here for the first time? <laughs> we welcome y'all new treasures in Jesus' name. Get it on, team. Raise your hand high. We're going to bring a little something to you. JL, that means you're nominated to do the job. Come on. What are you waiting for, JL? <laughs> He's got the brand new treasures in his hand. He got the brand new treasures in his hand. He got the brand new treasures in his hand. He got the whole world in his hands. He got all you rascals in his hands. He's got all of us rascals in his hands. He got all us rascals in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. Fantastic. Did everybody get a special little treasure? There we go. Good deal. Now, one guy wasn't brand new right here, but he's, but he's, but he's right here, right here. This guy isn't brand new, but this guy is he's coming around because uh, uh, he's Mike Alford's son. How about that? And his name is Josh. And about three weeks or a month ago, he uh, was involved in a real bad accident, was in a coma. Uh, they said he wasn't going to make it. It looks like he made it. The prayer of the Lord Jesus, binding faith. He's a faithful member over at Calvary and Gladewater, and those guys are praying, we're praying, and a whole bunch of friends are praying. Well, we got a little celebration because the guy's still here with us in Jesus' name. We love you, bro, and we're glad you're here, man. Hallelujah. You guys keep praying. Keep praying. And, Josh, God didn't just save you so that you could sit in a pew, man. We're glad you're sitting in a pew, but we believe you're going to be on mission, baby, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I bet he could make a few steps with that cross on, on Friday, couldn't he? I bet he might be able to make a few steps with the cross on Friday. We're going to give him a chance at that. In Jesus' name. There you go, Miss Susan. There you go, Miss Susan. Somebody got to step up and take Royce's place now. Amen. That's right. That, that means all of y'all. Can I get an amen from Josh? Can I get an amen from Josh back there? That's what I'm talking about. So, so, uh, so before I was solely, so uh, very divinely interrupted by my, uh, my team up here, amen, I was talking about healing and how we were talking about anointed for power. You see? We try to get healed, but then we walk powerless away. We feel good for a moment, and then we just slump away, whether it be emotionally or physically. We don't, that's because the anointing is going to remain on you when it comes in the Spirit in Jesus' name. So we talked about that two weeks ago, and then last week we talked about accepted. We talked about chosen. He said, you're not a servant, man. You've been walking with me for three and a half years. I also talked to you about how treasure is three and a half years old in two months. Jesus, Jesus' disciples walked with him for three and a half years. He said, okay, boys, you're not servants anymore. You're friends. Treasure is fixing to get to that place in two months. What's he trying to tell us? Oh, the name of this message is listener. What's he trying to tell you? I may be speaking about one thing. He may be telling you something completely different. That's all right. 
It's coming from him, coming from the throne room in Jesus' name. And it's poured out, flowing through you for power to be enacted in your life. Not just a hearer of it, but a doer of it in Jesus' name. We talked about this last week. In order to operate in God's true acceptance. Somebody say true acceptance. acceptance. I talked about that mirror. When you look in that mirror, you don't say, hmm, looks like I got a new growth coming up on my face. Don't look too good. No, we see each other as God's kids right there. It's his special creations. It's his treasures in Jesus' name. Then the joy starts to be imparted in glory. And we can accept ourselves like he does in Jesus' name. In order to operate in God's true acceptance, we talked about this last week, we must shift our self-evaluation system of success from the earthly measurement to the heavenly measurement. Can't measure our success by our bank account or our house or our social status, by uh, our friendship or our Facebook status or, or how popular we are or how defeated we are or how hurting we are, how physically we're hurting or any of those things. We cannot measure whether we're good or bad. You good? Yeah, I'm good. How many of you say that all the time? Let's look at that, man. Yes, I am good. The reason is because God said he's, that I'm awesome, actually. He said I'm his treasure. Send a son for me. That's why, that's why I'm good today. And I'm going to be good everywhere, no matter the circumstance. But you know what? We have to examine that. We can't lie about it and just put up the old God bless you little uh, Christian seal and say, God bless you, God bless you. When inside we got rotten stuff going on and we're getting really dark. I told you all that story before about that smell that was in my truck for a long time. I'll tell it again. Most of y'all are, have ridden with me lately. Most of y'all are saying, oh, it's still there, Johnson. <laughs> there was this smell in my truck about 10 years ago or 15 years ago, and I was working out a lot, and I was going to the gym and trying to keep my, uh, you know, truck clean or, and stuff like that. But this smell would not go away. So I'd get my truck washed. It wouldn't go away. You know, I put extra perfume. It would not go away. And every day I'd be going into the gym, working out and everything, have my gym bag and everything. <clears throat> and then one day it dawned on me. Maybe I should take a little closer look at that gym bag. Because <laughs> all the clothes in it were clean, right? But when I was on kind of a health kick, which I'm clearly not on anymore, <laughs> I used to cook, uh, cook me up some chicken breast, right? And I'd have a bunch of chicken breast. And, well, one day I had just apparently slid a couple of those in a special compartment in my gym bag. <laughs> I reckon they'd been in there for about a month before I finally found them. That's what it is with us. When we let junk get up inside of us, we start to reeking. We let unforgiveness get inside of us. We let our feelings about somebody else get inside of us. We let the words that somebody said hurtful to us get inside of us, and our whole life starts reeking like that, like Johnson's gym bag. And then we've been living from that place. Guess what? Then we bring in that reeking smell on somebody else. We're going to get that out of here. I smell the sweet fragrance and the sweet perfume from glory right now in Jesus' name. That river of water flowing right through us in Jesus' name is lighting us up. And if there's any darkness that we're putting up with and allowing in our life, let's get it out right now in Jesus' name. Let's loose it. Anything that gets bitter, you know how sour, bitter stuff gets? That's why they call it bitter, right? Some of our faces have been bitter for a long time. Some of, y- some of y'all think y'all's faces are like, like Mountain Rushmore bitter face. <laughs> I'm going to send Gary Don with a big old sloppy hug for you, okay? <laughs> if I ever see any bitter face people, I'm going to sick him on you in Jesus' name. We ain't going to go that route. All right. So that's what I was talking about the last few weeks. I just wanted to kind of bring you up to date because we want God's will to be done in our real life. Not just in our church time that we spend together, but in everything we do as it is in heaven. We want his will to be imparted into our body, into our spirit, into our loved ones. His will always in right now in my life, just like heaven. Because he, Jesus said the ki- he- kingdom of heaven is at hand when he was right there. And he said hey, the kingdom of heaven is like, over and over he says the kingdom of heaven is like. And you know why? Because he wants us to be like the kingdom of heaven. He wants it to be right here happening in the same sequencing and the same loving. 
And you know what? If that is resonated with you, that's, not the pre- pre- that's the pretext of the message. I pray you take that with you, okay? That you take that with you right now. If there's anything that doesn't look like heaven in my life today, I'm loosing it. I'm not going to live with it. I'm not going to put up with it in Jesus' name. You see, we all want to go to heaven, but we can understand right now that heaven is coming to earth right now. He's loosing it. That's why he said, my will be done right here. The kingdom of heaven is like... And it can be like this. Some of us lack motive. We lack motivation. And, and it's like we're just looking for a happiness. And you know what? All of a sudden we got it when we're in church and then we lose that motivation. God wants to plant it in you right now. He wants to get the, get the lie out of you and plant this motivation. So all the time I'm motivated about you. Not because some preacher told me about it, but because the Holy Spirit has drawn you. Because Jesus calls you a friend instead of a servant in Jesus' name. It's not about the, God, I serve Jesus today. No. Get to love people today. I want to talk briefly about the journey. Some of us are on a hamster wheel. Some of us want to get on the glory train. Choo-choo, choo-choo. Give me a choo-choo out there. Get on the glory train. That's how I want you all to walk around from now on, like the glory train. We're not just spinning around. We, we on a mission. We're going to get it on in Jesus' name. But we got to go somewhere. Some of us just been sitting in a pew for our whole life. Just going to church like we're supposed to go. That ain't what we do here at Treasure Man. We ain't going to do it. We are on the move over here. We own mission in Jesus' name, and we ain't stopping. We ain't stopping. Here comes the train. It's going to either pick you up or run over you, baby. Sometimes you got to pull that train too. Okay, look at me. Sometimes you got to pull it. Nobody else is pulling it, and you're just waiting for Johnson to just go pull the train. Dude, I might be having a date with my wife. Somebody pull the train. Don't wait for me. Somebody get a hold of it. In Jesus' name, get a hold of it. And sometimes you got to push it. All right? That's when you got to put your shoulder into it, boys. Okay? And it gets a little bit heavy in here, but you say, I'm not moving out of the way because it's going to run over somebody else. I'm going to shoulder it with you, man. And you know what? When there's a whole team of us, it ain't too heavy. He ain't heavy. He's your brother. Sometimes it's okay to be passengers. But see, them passengers are looking at them boys and how much fun they're having outside pushing and how much fun they're having up there pulling. And they're saying, I'm going to go help. I'm going to get over there, and I'm going to get it on right now in Jesus' name because that's what I'm called to do. I've been a passenger too long. Been going to church and paying a little tithe along the way. And that's all, you know, read your devotional in the morning. Boy, there's a lot more to it than that. There's a more, more, more love and a lot more fun in Jesus' name. Get on the glory train. You don't have to wait till the saints come marching in to do it either. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the journey on the choo-choo train to glory land that begins right now because heaven is right here and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, we're moving around right here. Making the kingdom happen right here in Jesus' name. The first step is to talk about the salvation part of it. Most people leave it right there. And I sometimes forget to speak it here. And I don't ever want to do that. All have sinned. That's me. Falling short of the glory of God. That's me. The wages of sin is death. I should be dead. How about you? Oh, I can wait for you to raise your hand. But the free gift of God, somebody say free. Free Free gift of God is eternal life. Hallelujah. Through Jesus. Now, the gift of eternal life is free, but being a disciple will cost you everything. When I was in prison, God told me that. Who's willing to pay it? Who's willing to be transformed like that to be a disciple in Jesus' name? After we get through that salvation part, and you know what? I'm just going to stop to pray a prayer right now. Lord God, in Jesus' name, many people remember exactly when they were saved, exactly when God hit them. And some people are sitting in here saying, I want to get on that glory train, but I don't know how. Or I've been on the religion train, and I've been just thinking about atonement and Jesus' sacrifice for me, but I haven't been transformed. Lord God, I accept you today. I ask you to forgive me today. I turn away from my sin, and I turn directly to you. 
in Jesus' name. And I, I exchange all of my old nature, all my old way of thinking, all the old man, all the old wine, all the old white skin for your nature, Jesus. For your character, Jesus. Come and take me over in entirety today. Hallelujah. I ain't going to be waiting for the train. I'm on the train. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. After we get to that place of salvation, we continue to move. And what's the first place we get to is, you know what? Jesus, when he opened that Bible up, and the, or the, uh, the scroll out, and he began to read from Isaiah, and then he repeated it. The, uh, the, the Dr. Luke wrote it in Luke chapter 4. He said, I have been anointed by the sovereign Lord. To bind up the brokenhearted. How many of you have been brokenhearted? Okay. See, what brokenhearted means is mean encaptivated. We have been taken prisoner of our own broken heart. And he wants to set us free of the broken heart. He wants to break us out of the heart trap. So after we get to the salvation, the first step in the journey is, second step in the journey is to get free of it. He doesn't want us just to get saved and be hurting there all the time. The devil didn't die, by the way, just because you got saved. He's still on attack and probably a lot more than ever because you're changing teams. And you're, you're, you're in that chasm between heaven and hell. And he's saying you're in heaven if you make this decision, but he's trying to drag you back to hell. So we ain't going back, are we? So God wants to set you free in that way. The Spirit of the Lord, God is spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. God is spirit. We're spirit. The Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. That means we have to live in the Spirit. You want to be free? Start living in the Holy Ghost. Straight up. If you're not, you will still be doing a 12-step or whatever you want to do. Come get free, man, in Jesus' name. You want to know whether or not you've come through that salvation journey. This is how I know. You will know, all men will know that you're my disciples as you love one another. You see, you can't disciple a demon. You can't make a disciple out of a demon, and you can't cast out the flesh. So we must decide to love every one of us in Jesus' name, to become a living sacrifice. That's my prayer. Hmm, I can go over here and have a little bit of fun in the flesh right now, or I can lay my life down and go help these people over here. Hmm. What do we choose? If we choose this, we're not a living sacrifice. We're no different than the world. There's no evidence. There's no fruit of our life being changed. And this is how we've decided to live. Selfish. See, God changes our nature. Jesus changes our nature. When we exchange natures with him, we say, if God sent his son to give that watch away, his most precious thing, his son, away, and I still want to give me a chocolate cake instead of feeding somebody that hadn't had a meal in a week. Did we exchange natures or not? No, we didn't. We hadn't been transformed. We, 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 we live in with our own selfishness, following the American dream, chasing the prosperity gospel, wanting the bacon instead of the beacon of Jesus. Now, I can yell at you all day long, but the Holy Ghost has got to move on your heart. So if you want a long move on long, we got the salvation, then we get into that freedom part, and then we get the healing. You see, somebody might have been punching you for your whole life, and your head is red, and you've got broken bones all over you physically. Well, somebody's been punching you emotionally all your life. The world has been telling you that you're no good, that you ain't going to make it, that you're a failure, that nobody loves you. You hear these messages from religion of judging us all the time, all of those kind of things. So when God comes to you and he says, I want to heal you, man. I want to love you so much. I want to take your broken heart out. I want to bind it up. I want to fix it with my love. We can be agents of that love or in our condemnation and our religion and trying to put people in our box. We can be the agents of death over them. I pray that the anointing is upon you to bind up the brokenhearted in your family right now. If there's a brokenhearted person in your family, don't judge them. Go bind them up in Jesus' name. When the punching stops, we're still sitting there bleeding, aren't we? Well, here comes the healing. Here comes the healing, and the healing happens when we finally realize who we are in Christ. I'm not all the things that the world has said I was. I'm not going to associate my soul and my life and anything that's happened with all of the death wishes 
the angel of the Lord came to the tomb and was the tomb was empty and the girls came and they said, where is he at? And they said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? We've been attached to dead things. I talked about it at Shade Tree. Let's break it off today in Jesus' name so that we can come and get a hold of our real identity as overcomers. It's treasures. It's royalty. That's who you are. That's your identity. Here it is. The next thing on that journey after salvation, freedom, choo-choo, salvation, freedom, choo-choo, healing, is discipleship. This is the part that will cost you everything. This is the part that the listener is. So I've got to tell you a personal story at this point about something that happened to me this week. So this treasure sale was coming up, and uh, somehow in my brain, I got it in my brain that I had to raise this money to send the kids to camp. And I got it in my brain, well, here's the budget, uh, here's what we've done, and here's where we're at, and all of that kind of stuff, and I'm doing the math, and I'm thinking logically. And then we start to gather up the items on Wednesday and Thursday, and I'm thinking I can, we can get this much for that, and, and these are great. I'm glad these people gave it to us that, and we're going to this. And then, then people started to talk. Now, if we put prices on everything, those people are trying to come in here and steal from you. Okay, so we've got to figure out a way that people don't come steal stuff or change the price tags around. And so all of this stuff's going through my brain, you know. Notice I said brain. Because in my shallowness, I was thinking like the world. Instead of thinking about God's economy, I was thinking about me doing something to send those kids to camp. Or even us doing something instead of God does everything. The night of the... The sale was open, and I got home real late that night, and I just barely slept. And about at 4, exactly at 4.23 in the morning, I woke up sweating, terrified, and God began to show me Jesus coming into the temple, ripping the tables up and letting them pigeons fly away and wrecking house, wrecking shop right there. And I began to say, that's what treasure is becoming. I begin to see how the special place that the kids worship over in the cove, and Tammy calls it the worship center over there. You know, it's not just the kids' playroom by any means. It's where they worship. The porch the same way where they worship over there was be selling stuff and trying to make money off of it. Conviction greatly came on to me. I began to think about all the stuff that would happen Saturday and about how uh, the that God's house could just look like a nasty flea market on Sunday morning. Whew. Conviction just started to rise all over me. So it was 423 in the morning, and so I, 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 was, I was thinking, well, I need to look at some book in the Bible and, and look at chapter 4, verse 23, because God spoke to me that way before, but that's not what he wanted to say. You see, at the shade tree yesterday, I was going to talk about the 23rd Psalm. So what he was trying to say is this. I want you to look at the 23rd Psalm, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thy rod. And that's where God stopped me right there. You see, if you're going to be a disciple, you're going to take some hugs, you're going to take some attaboys and some pats on the back, but you're going to take the rod sometimes. And this was my time to get on my face and take the rod before God and to repent and to say, Lord, I have done this so wrong. I have completely got the wrong heart, and I begin to repent about it and ask the Lord to, to, to show me a way out of this. I sent a text to some of the guys that were working at the cell. I said, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong, and I want to apologize to y'all, and I want to repent of it, and uh, I was listening with my head, making decisions that I thought were logical instead of letting them be processed through my heart. Somehow or the other, I began to look at the people that would come to the garage sale, like my wife and everybody else that loves garage sales, 
as somehow that I had to get something from them. This is what the Lord told me. I was wrong. I should never have led us into having this sale. God has always provided for us by faith. By faith. Somebody say by faith. That means not my scheme, not my idea, not my grand thing. Jim Cimbala was preaching a message I heard this morning about this church that, or this ministry that was going to get this big speaker to come, and he was going to bring all the money people in, and they were going to give all their money. Well, that ministry isn't even in business anymore because they weren't about the Father's business. So God was just, he was, he was whipping me, and I deserved every lick of it. He has always provided for us by faith just as he did the children in the wilderness. You know what's so awesome about the children in the wilderness? He could have sent animals by there, and they could have killed them and trapped them or something like that, but then they would think, I trapped them. I killed them. I got them. God provided everything for them guys in the wilderness. There was no doubt about his provision and his miracle in Jesus' name. God has always provided for us by faith as he did the children in the wilderness. As we have honored and blessed the poor, he's always blessed us from heaven. God doesn't want us to be like everyone else. Earlier in the week, Joe had sent me this, uh, this, this, this verse out of Amos chapter 5, and I'll read it for you out of the Message Bible. Amos chapter 5, verse 21 through 24. Lord, in Jesus' name, as we receive your word today, let it convict our hearts and change us. Lord God, I pray that many have come through salvation and freedom and they're healed and they're getting healed more and more. And now we come to that place of being disciplined and being disciplined learners and staying right here on the potter's wheel for you to mold us. And I'm beginning with me, the greatest of sinners. In your name we pray, amen. The prophet Amos, who was no, he was not a silver-tongued devil. He was a truth speaker. He said, I can't stand your religious meetings. I'm fed up with your conferences and your conventions. I want nothing to do with your religion projects and your pretentious slogans and goals. I'm sick of your fundraising schemes, Alan Johnson. <laughs> See, the worst thing about it is I'd already got this, this verse a week before. I'm sick of you and that. I'm sick of your public relations image making. I've had all I can take of your noisy ego music, all about me music. When was the last time you sang to me? You know what I want? I want justice. Oceans of it. I want fairness. Rivers of it. That's what I want. And that's all I want. Selah. That I means the end. Does your life look like that? Justice and fairness? Lord, in Jesus' name, are we serious about justice and fairness? Are we more into religion and our chase after the bacon instead of the beacon of Jesus? Lord, we want all of you. And we must be disciplined learners to come into this place. If there's injustice in our life in any way, Lord, we repent of it. If there's unfairness, we repent of it in Jesus' name. Well, about that time when God finished speaking to me, it was, uh, it was now 4.33 in the morning. And so the Lord said, we'll go to the 33rd Psalm. Look at verse 4, verse 5. For the word of the Lord is right. And all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and he loves judge justice. He had completely tied these, this, this scripture together right here. All the way from Amos to Psalms. In that moment when I was listening. See the sad thing was I wasn't listening all the time. The sad thing I had taken a moment uh, to become ego driven. Forgive me Lord and I repent of it. Then when I started listening, he put everything together. He, he brought the book of Amos and the book of Psalms together right there. And then the last part of this psalm says this. The earth is full of loving kindness of the Lord. And I said, that's it. The Lord said, that's it. 
That's what I want. I want love and kindness at the blessing sale. It's not a treasure sale. It's a blessing, blessing. How can we bless these people? This is what I want you to say to them when they get there. I want you to run up to them and I want you to say, how can we bless you today? We want to bless you today. Find something great. If you've got a little money to pay for it, great. We're sending the kids to camp. We appreciate it. If you can't, take it on with you. We started blessing people. Guess what? The Lord blessed us with over $3,000. But let me tell you about this. Joe, why don't you get up here and start going like this. <laughs> However he does it. He kind of gets to rocking sometimes too. <laughs> he got the whole world in his hand. He got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole wide world in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. Joe. I'm going to let him start because I always mess it up. But and we're going to need to sing it here in just a second. But I'm going to tell you this story, and then we're going we're to sing about this, this man that I met. Okay, so you know how you got a garage sale, and then people kind of come buy stuff early in the morning? Well, that means I can bless them early in the morning. You understand that? And I, I, I had it all wrong, you know. People can come. He said, the Lord said, when else are all these people going to come to your church, Johnson? You think you're a good preacher? You ain't that good a preacher. They're going to come, and you're going to get a chance to bless them, and we're going to do it. You see, one of the very first words that we got here, actually the very first word. Let me finish reading this thing. I forgot. First time I ever forgot anything. So I'm going to finish reading this text that I sent out to everybody. Then I'm going to tell you the story. When treasure started, there was a few people here, like 20 or 30 people, all some deep people. Boy, I tell you what, God has used every one of them in Jesus' name. And I'm sorry I didn't honor them like I should have when I very first started. I became an evangelist too quickly instead of a pastor. And the Lord has told me that many times. But there was a man that came and he said, that he heard from the Lord and, and he came and he said this is what I need to tell you people sitting here there were a, a, a few people there and he said the few will bless the many he said I heard from the Lord he was a listener the few people here will bless the many the roots of what Ms. Joyce and Brother Stan had started back in the 70s were still with us and they're still with us today in Jesus name so as God was telling me this, after I remembered this verse in, in Amos, and, and then I, I remembered when treasure started, the few, the Lord said, the few will bless the many, and that's what we can do. Since then, hundreds, thousands actually have already been blessed and come to Jesus, and many have been liberated, amen, from that beginning of Brother Stan and Ms. Joyce's faithfulness. Today is our day to bless the poor in the hurting as they come to treasure to the treasure blessing sale we will not exchange money in the temple as greedy merchants but we'll take every opportunity today to bless our community with Jesus love and Jesus compassion furthermore we will finish the sale today that's Friday and get over to shade tree on Saturday where we need to be on Jesus mission people came and the Lord blessed. And the first man that came pulled up. And I was, I started to be about the business of the sale. But God had done put the different. Hey, stop everything you're doing. There's a person there. And I love him. Go talk to him. And I went and I put my hand around this fella. He's carrying a big old long knife on his, on his side. And I introduced myself to him. He said, my name's William, and I need some chairs. I said, yes, sir. Well, we got some over here. He said, you see, I don't have very much furniture in my house, and, and I don't ever have any company, but I'm going to have some company this weekend. Yes, sir. Well, let me help you with some chairs over here. And there were two chairs over there. They were nice. And he said, I said, how much you want for them? I said, $7 a piece. <clears throat> and he said, okay, great. And he got, got his money out. And I said, well, well tell me your story. And he started to tell me a story. He looked at me tonight and he said, the first customer we had, name William. He said, well, 35, 37 years ago, I had a child, a 
I was in the war and I had a child and I didn't even know much about him and and I got a chance to just talk to him till he was two years old it was a girl little daughter till she was two years old and then I hadn't seen her again until this week when she found me on the Facebook 35 years later and they're coming to my house and I want them to have a place to sit down I said you take them chairs they're free they're the blessing that's what we do in Jesus name